All right, this is LSAT prep test 68, section four questions one through five, which is the first logic game of this section. Okay, uh, so what do we have? We have that a realtor is showing a prospective buyer seven houses, uh, J, K, L, M, N, and O, and P. One more. I can count, I swear. Uh, the first and second will be shown in the morning, third, fourth, and fifth in the afternoon, six and seven in the evening. Okay, so it looks like they're very concerned with the order that we're going to show these houses in. Uh, so this immediately, uh, you know, gives me the impression this is a sequencing game where I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots. Um, and for the, and other than that, right, all we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to divide this into morning, afternoon, and evening. Uh, at this point, I still see it as a simple sequencing game. This is just a small, you know, quote unquote twist. Uh, and then the, I mean, the only real thing they do to us is that, you know, rather than say slot one or slot two, they're just going to say in the morning. Or rather than slot 6 or slot 7, they're just going to say in the evening. You just have to know what that means. Okay, uh, so nothing else in the paragraph above. Uh, the rules are, J must be shown in the evening, which means there's no J's here, no J's here, meaning that J is in one of these two slots. Right, okay. Uh, next, K cannot be shown in the morning. No K here. Right, nothing about these guys. And the third is that L must be shown sometime after K, so L is after K, and before M. Okay. So these are our rules. I'm going to pull this down a little bit because what I'm going to do is that when I see something with, with so few, um, let's actually move this list of elements up here so I can grab the entire thing, copy and paste it. Uh, you would have to do this manually, of course, uh, but I'm cheating because I'm using a computer. Uh, but anyway, you see that, you know, when I, when I see something that looks like this, when, when J is in one of these two slots, what am I going to do? My first instinct is immediately I'm going to split the board. Either J is there or J is there. And this works because we know that J is not going to be anywhere else, right? So forget this, forget this, forget this, and forget this. We don't need it anymore because now we have, you know, scenario one and scenario two, and I'll, I'll, I'll even number them. Uh, this will be one, this will be two. Okay, what else do we know? We know that K, L, and M has to be in this particular order, right? Which means that there's a lot of spaces actually where K is not going to be able to go. For example, you know, because since K needs two things behind it, uh, it's not going to be here. Or let, let's actually start here, right? So, so K is not going to be here, right? Because there's no space. K is also not going to be here because, you know, there's, there's already a space occupied here, which means that the earliest that K is going to be is, is over here. Uh, but then you also see that there's no K in the morning. There's no K in the morning. Right? So once again, we come to another inference. Right? The, the interplay between this rule here and this rule here tells us that K is only, gonna be, only ever going to be in one of these two slots. Um, so we can, we can say K is going to be here or here. K is going to be here or there. Right? Uh, and it's worth noting that you could have actually split this up uh, another way if you had so chosen. Um, if you had made this inference, you, know, you, you could actually have also gone that you could put K here and then K here, uh, or K here down here, and then just leave the J's uh, like this. Or alternately, if you really want to be complete about it, this is what you can actually do, right? Let's copy these again, uh, you know, with the wonder of computers. Uh, I'm going to call this 3. I'm going to call this 4. We're actually just going to put the K um, here versus there. We're going to put the K here versus there. Right? And this works. This works because you have four scenarios, because you know that J is going to be in one of these two places. By elimination, you know that K is going to be in one of these two places. And so when you have two sets of two possibilities each, you're going to wind up with four possibilities. Uh, and so let's, let's do a little rearranging on our paper here, uh, remembering again that this, this is basically the only rule we have to worry about at this point. Uh, and that's it. Right? So this is a lot of information that we have moving into these questions, which should uh, theoretically, now that we have all this information, not give us a ton of trouble. Oh, the last thing I like to do is uh, we, we have rules for J, K, L, and M, right? N, O, and P are the elements that basically do whatever they want. Uh, you can slot them in anywhere. There's no rules attached to them, which means that it's really going to be difficult for us to narrow things down purely on the basis of any of those three elements. Okay. So let's go to the questions. All right. So I've put up the answer choices, answer choice uh, to, to question number one, uh, so I don't have to write them all down. Uh, as you, this is your typical acceptability question. 
uh, which means that all they're looking for is basically it's something that breaks our rules, right? So th this should be relatively easy. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the morning, afternoon, evening lines directly onto uh, you know what we're talking about. Sorry, that's a little messy, but you get the point, right? And the reason is this just makes it just incredibly easy for me to eliminate um, answer choices that don't jive with our rules. Okay, so the first one I'm going to test is this guy. No K in the morning. K in the morning. Goodbye. Uh, no K in the morning. That's fine. Next one I'm going to test is J has to be in the evening. So J, 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 uh, no J. Gone. Okay. And then this K, L, and M thing, right? K, L, uh-oh, no. Right, this L is out of place. K, L, and M, that's fine. Uh, K, L, and uh-oh, this M is out of place. Done, done, and done. Okay. Uh, and this actually brings me to another thing. You know, like I, I we, we didn't talk about it over here, but recognizing that, for example, K, L, and M, um, you know, are in this certain order, you can actually fill in the rest of these slots. For example, if K is here, then you know, the K, L, and M have to be there. If K is here, K, L, and M have to be here. Uh, here, in these cases, it's not so clear, uh, but you do know that L and M have to be uh, after the K, which means that actually what you can do is you can say there's, there's no L and there's no M in the morning either. No L and no M in the morning pretty much the whole way down. Right, and th this is something that you don't have to do because you could uh, theoretically just go from you know this K L M rule, and you would just understand uh, that that the L has to come after the K, and so obviously if it doesn't, you're going to be violating one of your rules. Uh, but the point being that you know if you come up with this this type of thing, uh, it just gives you more information for you to work with in case you do get stuck. Okay, so next question. Next question is number two. Uh, number two asks us what? Number two asks us. Uh, which of the following is a pair of houses that cannot be shown consecutively in either the order? All right. So once again, I've typed them up for you, so we don't we don't have to waste time writing them out. Um, okay. So they're asking us which of the following cannot be appear together in either order, and that's important uh, because it means that in addition to, for example, J and K not being able to be in this particular order, you also can't have K and then J. You can't have M before J. You can't have O before J, P before J, or M or P before M in this order, right? Uh, and, but in this case, I don't think it ends up mattering. And here, here's the reason I say that. Okay, the first thing I notice is that three of these elements uh, come with these floaters, right? Or three of these answer choices come with these floaters, and it's going to be exceedingly difficult for us uh, to to eliminate any answer with a floater, like we said before, because they can just do whatever they want, right? Uh, but then this question ends up being much easier once you wind up, you know, doing the work up front, because then you see answer choice A is immediately it because J is in these two slots, K is in these two slots, and there's always going to be at least one, uh, one slot worth of, of filler between them. Right? That, that last afternoon slot is always going to be between them. So we don't even need to check the rest of them. Uh, for the record, you know, answer choice B, J and M are here together, both of them, uh, you know, twice if you, if you split them out that way. Um, J and O, uh, you know, O is one of our floaters, which means you can put the O here, you can put the O here, right? because the K L M can just fill up the afternoon slots. So that's not going to be it. And then M and P, um, clearly not in these instances, but all you, all you need to know is that, uh, you know, down here, K, L, M, and then P. And this one's actually kind of tricky because it doesn't work in either of these first three or any of these first three scenarios. But when you leave the maximum amount of space between K and J, you're able to fill in L, M, and P, or L, or L P, and M, right? So this one is probably the, the one that you would have the most trouble eliminating, even if you did all this work. Uh, but nevertheless, we've eliminated it. That's why we know the answer is A is the answer here. All right, let's keep going. Number three, which of the following must be true? OK, so these are our five things. And we're looking for something that must be true, MBT. right? And so this is just a simple question of looking at the things that we've discovered about our setup. Uh, for example, answer is A, K in the morning. Nope, starts here. Right, this is a deduction you should have been able to make up front. L in the afternoon, um, actually, yeah, uh, it looks like it uh, because you know L's always got M behind it, right? So you know you're not going to be pu putting L in the evening along with J, uh, and then L can't be in the morning. We figured that out back here in question one. So it looks like answer is B is very good. Let's keep that around. Um, and if you know if you weren't convinced by this, then you would be able to test L's in the evening directly in number three. Right? If you put L here, there's no room for M. L, no room for M. No matter where you put it, there's no room for M after it, and so that means that C can't be the answer. Answer is D, M in the morning. Nope, we figured that out. 
Answer is E, M in the afternoon. Uh, here, definitely not, right? And then all you need is one counterexample. KL, we can put the M back here. Uh, we can put the M over here, right? We, we actually figured that out on answer is E up here uh, where, where we ran the hypothetical K, L, P, M, right? So answer is E is also not going to be the answer. Therefore, answer is B is the answer to this question. Uh, this question is just incredibly easy uh, if you do all this work up front. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so number four is a could be true question. I'm actually going to write these out because it's easier to, to translate that way. Uh, so, so they're asking us just, you know, out of these five, which of, the, which of them is just possible? Uh, so A, B, C, D, E. Uh, A says K is shown after J is shown. So K is shown after J is shown. Answer choice B, L is shown after L is, or after J is shown. So L is shown after J. Answer choice C says that P is shown after J. Answer choice D says N and O are after M. So N and O are both after M. And then E says N and P are after K. N and P are both after K. Uh, I should have adjusted those a little bit, but you, you get the idea. Okay. Um, so all you have to do here is, is look at what you've got, right? So for example, answer is A, J before K. There's no way because K comes here in the afternoon. J is in the evening, so forget it. Uh, answer choice B, uh, J before L. Uh, is that possible, right? Cause you, uh, and, and the answer is no, because you need, you need an M here in the evening slot or some floater in this evening slot, which means that this L is always going to be in the afternoon, um, meaning that there's no way that it can be in the evening, right? There, there's no way that we can put L here, for example, because then it will require an M after it. So no. Okay, how about J before P? Could this be true? Um, yeah, I think so, right? Because it looks like here, down here, uh, definitely not here, right? J before M is, takes up those slots. But here, if you do J before P, you do the K, L, and M here in the middle. Uh, so it looks like answer choice C is pretty good. Let's keep going. Answer choice D. M could be before N and before O. There's just no way. Um, M, M. And then even here, the, latest, the, the earliest you can put the M is in this slot right here. Right? So which means there, that there's, gonna, there's not going to be room for two things after it. So forget it. No. And then answer is E. K is before N, and K is also before P. Right? And this one, this one is easiest to, to sort of sort out. If you also remember that K has also got to be before L, which has got to be before M, which means that there's one, two, three, four things behind it, and one, two, three, four things behind it, and there's this J always clogging up one of the evening slots, right? which would push the K to the morning. You know the K can't be in the morning, so therefore answer to us E is out. And therefore C is your answer to this question. All right, home stretch. Number five, if P is shown in the afternoon, which of the following must be true? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're saying that K is in one of these two slots. Now we're saying that P is shown here as well, right? What is the effect of this rule? Well, back here, what we were doing is that we would say that K, L, and M could fill all of these, uh, all of these morning slots, or all these afternoon slots, rather, uh, and then one of the floaters could be out here. Uh, the reason they're going to put P here is that no matter what, that forces one of the M... Uh, or that forces the M, I guess, into one of these last two spaces. Uh, you see how that is, because we have K before L before M. The earliest we can put K is here, right? So even, so, you know, wherever you put the M, or wherever you put the P, rather, um, you're only going to have room for L, and that means the M's got to be over here, right? So you know that back here, you have M slash, uh, what, is, what is the thing? M slash J, and so these two slots are filled up. And so what you have left in these slots are K, L, and P in some order. K before L and P can do whatever it wants. Uh, which means what? Which means that the remaining elements, which means N and O, have to be over here in some order. Right? Okay. And so this is, you know, so now that you know all of this information, uh, this is the rule that we have to follow. Uh, but I, I think we know that, so we can just, I think we can just get rid of this. Uh, for the sake of clarity, um, let's actually move this up here as well. Uh, so you can really see what's going on, right? So all that really matters is that, you know, there's only so many ways that this can go. It's KLP, KPL, PKL, that's it. There's, there's only three ways that, the, that this middle section could possibly work. Okay, so all that being the case, what they're asking us what must uh, be true. Okay, so I'll just write these out. J is seven, uh, excuse me, not M. K is third, N is first. 
m equals afternoon and o is in the morning okay so immediately you know we don't know where any of these things go these, these all switch off and the, these all switch off as well so these three guys are immediately out because we don't know the absolute uh, locations of any of them uh, and if nothing else you should be able to do that know that right off the bat uh, you know in particular j being seven no it could be six k is three no we know that k can be three or four right n is one no it could be two as well right you just don't know enough about any of these elements okay so that leaves us is m in the afternoon no our new rule this p pushes it out of the afternoon slot so that can't be d so it must be e and is that correct o is in the morning yeah it's got to be because once you have k l p m and j in the afternoon and evening these are the only two guys that are left for the morning so no matter what you're gonna find it you're gonna find an o somewhere in these first two slots